All right, so I was last ending <clears throat> kind of addressing the, um, the kind of new development of this battle over these new states becoming free or slave. And um, again, we will be discussing this, uh, and uh, it'll be heavily discussed in the John Brown um, documentary. And um, it's about as potent as the Nat Turner except that we do have more actual information on John Brown. And um, we do know for sure that this was a man who thought that God really did give him a mission in which to use eventually violence um, as a way to uh, literally fight against slavery. Okay? Um, so... Basically in Kansas, and uh, again, like I said, you'll be going over this later, but I really want to put this event in your mind. So you'll get it in several doses, okay? Um, so you basically had a pro-slavery federal marshal there, and um, he led a large posse and sacked uh, a free state or town, okay? And so the slavers were not only doing violence by forcing people to be slaves but now it was violence against whites fellow whites that that were trying to come and prevent it from being a slave state um and john brown as you will learn he, he had a long legacy of um being against slavery he was a very religious christian and i, I kind of want to point something out too especially when we go and we look into this week section on the book defending slavery and you're going to see Southern Christian intellects uh, um, making strong biblical arguments in defense of slavery. Um, we should also then point out that most of the abolitionists, whether they were militant or of the pacifist kinds, were also Christian. And so this was just as much as a theological war in a certain sense, you could argue, which is not really addressed in the book's any of the books that I have for you. And so in other words, um, even some of my students I see are very conservative evangelical Christians who have very, very strong literalist biblical interpretations that some more like modern people, you know, maybe that support uh, a kind of morals and ethics now that are seen to be progressive while, while they're offensive to the more traditional conservative minded you would have seen at the time people with those same kind of religious convictions all over America. But some of those would have, on the slavery question, it would have been, well, what does this mean in regards to slavery? Okay. And something I want you to think about, I'm going to open up this can of worms since we just had this terrible terrorist uh, attack in Paris. Um, religious fundamentalist um, Muslims kind of go through this question of when they see the oppression of their Muslim communities, Islam gives the right of Muslims to defend themselves. But not every Muslim um, believes that the Quran gives them carte blanche or Islamic law or Sharia law, the right to just um, do any kind of, of, of acts of violence. Okay, and so you have people that could have the same religious values, dress the same, look the same, but then on a fundamental issue have a very different vision about what they're supposed to do. And for the outside world, it would look they look the same until you actually get to the heart of this one issue. Slavery would be the same. I'd argue that conservative Christians at the time, you go to a church, you'd probably hear the same type of sermon, except one may say God is definitely against slavery and I mean, I'll even give a gun to somebody to prove it. And you had the other side with someone saying, God's definitely in support of it. And I definitely have a gun uh, uh, um, to give to somebody to prove it. And so um, this was as much as a theological battle on that front. Okay. Even within white America. Okay. Now, <clears throat> and you're going to see this very clearly when you read the Defending Slavery text. Now, the Defending Slavery text doesn't show you the arguments of the abolitionists. I actually had a girl when she read one of the ministers uh, defending slavery through the Bible was crying in my class. And she said, Mr. Pollock, the Bible doesn't defend slavery, does it? And I just wanted to return to this question instead of getting involved in that, to just point out that 
John Brown, whatever you think of him and his acts. We don't know, I don't, I've never read a long list of his theological arguments, but he felt that it was against the Bible and he shot people that wanted to promote slavery, okay? Um, but again, there were a more pacifist type of abolitionists that were not comfortable with his interpretation. Now, so what happened, go, returning back to um, Potawatomi and where he is at, his sons were actually living in a camp there and they were a mess, which you'll see in the documentary. And he basically goes to take care of his sons. And while he's there, he sees all of these anti-slavery communities basically being terrorized by the pro-slavers. And you saw that picture at the beginning where I showed you the Southern uh, politician nearly beating to death the abolitionists uh, in Washington, you know, right there on the, uh, um, you know, in the political debate on the Senate or, or, or floor in Congress. I'm, I'm trying to remember what branch they were debating. For. In any case, there were two politicians nearly killing each other um, over the issue of slavery. And the fact that the Southerner almost, you know, the pro-slaver almost killed the, the abolitionist uh, 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 right there on the spot just made them crack. And John Brown goes with his men. They go to the slavers. You'll see this in the documentary. And they hack them up, almost like a Nat Turner uh, reenactment with blades. Uh, uh, I mean, we're talking about hacking up, hacking up bodies, like grotesquely, and then shooting them and then going door to door, basically like annihilating um, people who were um, once terrorizing the anti-slavery people. So again, what we have, he didn't start this. This was a response. This was violence responding to violence. This was Americans mutilating fellow Americans, white America versus white America, over this issue of, is this state going to be a slave state or a free state? That's how intense this was in this country. And this painting kind of really depicts this here, right? This is a very famous painting tragic prelude and in a sense this artist is really showing john brown as the precursor to americans killing americans on an unprecedented level and so john brown will o crack open the question of violence and the issue of slavery uh in a way now i well I should finish my thought in in, in in a way that really is going to be uncomfortable for many americans at the time and, and still is but we're going to see that over half a million Americans kill each other before we resolve the issue of slavery. Canada didn't have this problem. I mean, let's think about this. I just want to remind us, just for, for humility's sake, because we do think well of ourselves, and we have a lot of reasons to. Canada is, is relatively independent of the British, and most people would think of Canada as a free state. When I went to Canada, I certainly didn't feel any oppression. Canadians are pretty proud, relatively patriotic, and um, I, I, I hung out with a, a, a native girl who had a little different interpretation because the, um, the native uh, indigenous people of, of, of uh, North America, in other words, Native Americans uh, of Canada, kind of, uh, I think because there wasn't even the slavery issue, feel like they're the most um, abused of the Canadian legacy. But Ultimately, it felt like America in a lot of ways, but then there, there wasn't a war of revolution. There wasn't a, a, a killing and death to make it free. Slavery was simply abolished. There was no civil war over slavery in Canada. Um, there's something a little more violent in our legacy that I feel like we have to kind of come to terms to. Our legacy is very violent, okay? And this isn't me like trying to put us down. I'm just saying, I mean, you know, you look, even how we approach terrorism, many other times, you know, I remember when, Sta when Spain had a terrorist attack, the reaction is very different. We are an eye for eye kind of mentality. It's just how we think, you know, look in your Facebook right after you see a terrorist attack and people are already talking about dropping nuclear bombs on ISIS or wherever. I mean, there's babies, uh, nuclear bombs kill babies. But it's so easy for us to, to say that. I remember there was a joke somebody was trying to tell me at a party uh, when we were getting ready to go to war with Iraq. And he says, um, what's the difference between Iraq and glass? And he said, a nuclear bomb. Ha, ha, ha. You know, 
as if all of those lives don't matter. We have this kind of warrior mentality that I just think we have to be honest about. And I, I don't even know if warrior is the right mentality, right? Um, but it's it's a part of us. And our, so our legacy has been, frankly, violence. And, um, you know, look we how much uh, street violence that we have. Now, again, we're not alone in this, okay? Um, I... But I do think, though, that you're probably looking at all this history I'm going over, and it's a little obvious, right? <laughs> um, and yet we have a lot to offer. We have a complex legacy. And uh, I, I love studying American history, and I love contemplating about it because it's our country, it's my country, where I live, and I have to contemplate who I am and what I think about these things. Um, so uh, that's really all I have to say about that right now. I'm going to move on to the next section.